And now we're looking at how to set class level permissions. To do that, we use the parse dashboard. So just open it up. We're going to look at how to set it on the user class, but you could set this on any other class in the browser. So just make sure you've selected user or, or, or whichever class you want to set this on. And then you go into the security tab on the top right, you click that. And then the edit class level permissions dialog comes up and you can see at the top, it's set up currently and, and this is the default setting all of your classes will have. Now it's set up so that the public, which is anybody can read or write data to this class. But I think the user class is, is somewhat special. I don't really want to give any user out there in the world the ability to query all of my users and perhaps scrape personal data or, or information about that user um, into their platform. Or just generally, I don't really want them to know even how many users I've got of my system, of my platform. So what I might do is I might then go into here and untick read and hit save. Okay, let's edit it again. So what this does is it stops people from being able to query the user class. So it will stop them from being able to do a find on the user class and, and get a list of all of the users. But it really doesn't help us too much because we will still need the ability to get a user object and save a user object. Perhaps you've got a profile page or something and you want the ability to let the currently logged in user get information about themselves, about their user object, perhaps change their name and then hit save again. But by unclicking read, we by default switch off the capability of even doing a get, even doing a get, even if you have the ID. So how do we get that back again? Well, what you can do is if you click on the gear icon on the top right, expand it out and the view we have is the simple view. We want the advanced view, okay? Now, when you click on the advanced view, you can see that we now have quite a few other options appear on the screen, a lot more granular control on the permissioning. So the key thing I want to say is that really what I want to stop is the find, is the querying. I don't want to stop people from being able to get specific user instances as long as they have the ID, which is what get means. If you have the ID of the user, you should be able to get it. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to specify get. And also, let's say I'm, I'm switching this on to production. In production, I probably don't want any user from being able to add fields to the user object. Only maybe this makes sense during development, but, but once I've released, I don't really want to give them permission to add a field. Now to persist this, just save CLP. Okay, and now when I open it up again, you can see the read has a, has a line through it, which indicates that it's kind of got some, it's not a tick and it's not empty, it's some, somewhat in between. So to see it, just click on the advanced tab again. Okay. Okay, so that's some settings which we set up for the public. What if we wanted to set it up so that perhaps an, an admin user, perhaps you as a developer, no matter what, you want to have find permissions and add field permissions, but just you, just you, the developer. And what you can do then is you can actually specify some permissions just for a user. So to do that, get a user ID. So get an object ID for a user. I'm going to just pick this one. Go into security again, go in advanced if you want. And then you can just specify a specific user. There we go. And by default, they have get permissions on all the right permissions. A user will have that. But you can switch on and off their permissions for finding and adding a field. So I'm going to switch them on for this user. And then you just hit save. So now if I go back into security. So now Joe Public will, won't be able to run queries or find on the user class. But this admin user particular, in particular, they can run a find and they can add a field onto the user class. There's also this thing called a role here as well, and, and we'll cover that later on. But you can also specify a role and then say anybody who belongs to that role has these sets of permissions. So that's class level permissions. And that's something you can specify very easily just via the dashboard. It adds quite a lot of security to your application but it's quite a high level of security. It doesn't really give you 
really low level granular security, which you get using access control lists, which we'll cover in the next lecture.